Today, we will visit Egypt. We are going way back, to when the region was still divided between Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. But how did it come to be unified? And by who? This siltstone palette might just hold the answer. Before unification, Lower Egypt was distinct from its southern neighbor. The climate was milder, rainfall more abundant, and there was access to the Mediterranean. Their districts were called gnomes, all worshipping different gods, with the capital being at Memphis. Upper Egypt had gnomes as well, with the capital at Thinis. This might be where Scorpion I was from, who is said to have been a king in Upper Egypt, around 3400 to 3200 BCE. We have no visual representation of Scorpion I, so who is this on the palette? Again, we aren't certain, but Egyptologists believe this to be King Narmer, who was given the name Menes, meaning one who endures. At the top are the symbols for catfish, phonetically Nar, and chisel, phonetically Mer. In the center, we see Narmer standing tall with the crown of Upper Egypt resting on his head, his sandal bearer in tow. At his mercy is a man, perhaps a ruler. The symbols nearby indicate his name is Wash. The falcon Horus watches on, atop papyrus flowers, the symbol for Lower Egypt, while demonstrating total domination over the land. At the bottom, two bearded men appear to either be in retreat from the large figure, or simply dead. On the back of the pallet, a kingly procession occurs, with the same leader from the front, scaled up in height. Here, he wears the crown of Lower Egypt. In front of his standard bearers are ten bodies, all decapitated. Above them are symbols thought to represent the areas they are from. The center of the palette shows two mythological creatures, serpo pards, half serpent, half leopard, which intertwine their necks. They might represent the lioness gods Bast and Sekhmet, who were the deities of Upper and Lower Egypt. At the bottom we see a bull, representing Narmer, knocking down town walls, and trampling someone. So what can we gather from this? Well, the catfish and chisel phonetically gives us the name Narmer. He appears to have defeated the last ruler of the region, perhaps named Wash. Narmer wearing both the crown of Upper and Lower Egypt, along with the intertwining of necks can signify that the king unified the two regions. We know it was a fierce battle because of the violence depicted. Details of the battle are most likely lost to history, but Egyptologists believe King Narmer set out on a campaign with the Thinite Confederacy, all the way down to the Nile Delta. Out of what Egyptologists call the Proto-Dynastic Period, or more colloquially Dynasty Zero, the battle would mark the end of prehistoric Egypt, and the beginnings of the ancient period around 3150 or 3100 BCE. Narmer would found Egypt's first dynasty, bringing about the first dynastic period and sparking the beginning of the Mediterranean's most preeminent civilization for centuries. Thanks for watching Made in History. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos.